Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. So I've been playing around with Haskell lately and as I was doing that, I came across this paper on how to implement red-black trees in a functional manner. And this was written back in 1993 by Chris Okasaki, who is pretty famous in functional programming circles for his 1999 PhD dissertation on purely functional data structures. I thought this would be a good example of functional programming because in every introductory data structures course, one of the most dreaded assignments is to implement a red-black tree. And the reason that is, is because there are just so many different cases to consider in how to rebalance red-black trees. The cool thing about this paper, in addition to giving a very elegant implementation, is also that the author simplifies a lot of those messy cases down to just four pretty easily understandable ones. I don't want to go into all the background about red black trees, but very briefly, they are balanced binary search trees that give you order log n lookup, insertion, and deletion. In addition to a standard tree node which holds an element as well as a left child and a right child, in a red-black tree each node is also assigned a color which is either red or black. And every node and the tree as a whole must satisfy these two invariants. A red node cannot have a red parent and every path from the root to an empty node in other words, to a leaf, contains the same number of black nodes. And this is the invariant which keeps the tree as a whole roughly balanced and ensures that you get order log in lookup times. So let's go through the implementation in the paper. And it's pretty short and straightforward. We simply say that color is either red or black and a tree which holds elements of type ELT is either E which is an empty tree or it is a tree which has a color, a left tree, a right tree, and the element that it holds. So that's a fairly simple and literal representation into Haskell of what a red-black tree is. Now in this paper, the author looks at specifically using red-black trees as sets and looking at two specific operations on sets. One is to check for membership and the other one is to insert an element into the set. So we simply define a set to be a tree, a red black tree that we've just defined. And the membership check is the standard membership check that you have on search trees. And that utilizes the property that everything in the left subtree is less than the element in the node and everything in the right subtree is greater than the element at the node. So if the thing you're looking for is less than the current element in the node, you go recursively look in the left subtree. If it's equal, then you found it. And if it's greater, then you go look in the right subtree. So that's fairly standard as search trees go. The more interesting part is in the insert operation because that's where you need to rebalance the tree. And what we're doing here is we're creating a new node and giving it the color red. And what happens when we do that is that we might be violating the first invariant of red black trees, which is that a red node must not have a red parent. And in this diagram, the author is explaining that there could only ever be these four cases where that invariant is not satisfied. And you can then rearrange the tree in such a way that the invariant is satisfied. And you can look at this diagram a bit more closely and convince yourself that rotating the tree in this way preserves all the search tree properties as well. If you just look at this first case, for example, X is in the left subtree of Z, so X is less than Z. And y is in the right subtree of x, so y is greater than x. And here we see in the rebalance tree that that relationship is still preserved because x is less than y and z is greater than y. So if you simply encode those four patterns as Haskell code, this is what you get. Note that the right hand side of these four cases is identical because those four cases where the invariant was broken 
all reduced to the same tree when they are rearranged. So that didn't seem so bad. That seemed much less painful than the intro to CS or intro to data structures assignment that we've all been through. So what happened? As the author said, what happened to all the mess? The way red-black trees are typically explained in most textbooks has about eight cases and it is framed in terms of color flips and single and double rotations of the tree nodes. But you might very well ask, why do that? What is all that extra complexity buying you? And as the author points out, in an imperative setting, you are doing all these things to buy a little bit of extra performance. For example, you can save a few assignments by doing color flips. You can do it in three assignments rather than the seven or more in the current functional version of balance. However, note that in a functional setting, you are not really modifying the data structure in place. You are creating new nodes as opposed to imperatively modifying the data structure that already exists. There's also another performance optimization where the bottom-up rebalancing phase can be terminated early, but you're not doing that in this Haskell solution. In any case, as the author says here, absent very strong empirical evidence, you really have to question whether that extra complexity is really worth the little bit of performance gains you might be getting, especially in a pedagogical context. So that was a quick look at a purely functional implementation of red black trees in about 15 or 20 lines of Haskell code where the author proposes a much cleaner and a much simpler way to rebalance red black trees. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.